Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I think this hearing is important to clarify and would help our federal workers to understand uh, how to interpret recent decisions of, uh, of the authority. Um, Ms. Uh, 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 Kiko, um, uh, do you agree that collective bargaining is a rational way uh, to solve problems within the federal government and to promote peace, what is commonly called labor peace? Yes, I do. Uh, you have testified you show no anti-union bias, so I would like to ask you uh, some, uh, questions based on some of your recent decisions. Uh, I was struck uh, by your interpretation of the labor service, the Federal Service Labor Management Relations Statute, which defines collective bargaining, and I'm gonna read its definition, a good faith effort to reach agreement with respect to conditions of employment. It seems pretty straightforward to me. In a, in a couple of your recent decisions, you made uh, decisions that are uh, distinctions <laughs> that uh, uh, I've seldom seen. Um, um, these this, distinctions were between the words uh, so follow me, conditions of employment and working conditions. Now, I'm not gonna indicate what I think the average American, how they would read those words. I'm gonna go to uh, the decisions of the authority. Um, in, in the, there are any number of precedents uh, where this matter has come before. Uh, and what, 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 what I am trying to understand is what appears to be a departure from precedent. Uh, so let me just ask you, since they came uh, during your watch, what is the difference between working conditions and conditions of employment? Well, thank you, uh, Congressman. Um, I believe the statute very clearly uses the terms conditions of employment and working conditions in, two diff in different ways. The term conditions of employment is defined by personnel policies, practices, and matters affecting working conditions. In the past, the precedent has synonymous or made the, the two terms synonymous, the conditions of employment and working conditions were the same thing. I believe they are two different things and that is uh, the, the case law that, that's coming out now is, is looking at those terms to see if we can't more clearly so, so, so define you do, them. So you are, are conceding that, that no distinction until your own decisions had been made between those two uh, phrases. Um, I would concede that there were, they were synonymously, yes. had been defined in, in the same terminology in the past. And of course, uh, uh, Chairwoman Kiko, uh, when people try to follow the law, they don't have anything really to guide them except precedent. And I just want to cite to you and ask you whether this precedent is something that uh, you looked at before essentially making a contrary, a contrary interpretation. And I'm quoting now from authorities' decision. I'm, I'm, the one I'm quoting from is GSA, East, Eastern Distribution Center, Burlington, New Jersey. Um, and, and there the authority stated, a purported distinction between conditions of employment and working conditions to narrow the party's bargaining obligations directly conflicts with the congressional intent. So essentially what you're gonna to have to show is that what Congress intended um, is the interpretation you are now making, not what the decision I just quoted said was consistent with congressional intent. So how is your reversal of how this statute was interpreted before your changes, 
how is your interpretation consistent with congressional intent? Because um, you can't just change a statute. Right, right. And right. you certainly can't just right. uh, turn a, your own precedents around. So you've got to go to something authoritative. And last time I looked, Congress is the authoritative, has issued the authoritative words that the authority must look to in deciding whether or not it agrees with existing precedent. Yes, I believe the first thing we look at in determining any case before us is the statutory language. Then we also look at precedent. But to me, when I look at precedent, I look at it and use it if it is consistent with the plain language of the statute. If it is not consistent with the plain language of the statute, then I would look to the precedent as, as to changing the precedent because I would feel that it is not consistent with the language well, of the statute. Well, I understand that, Ms. Kiko. Uh, uh, but it, it's not simply what the uh, authority has, has found both the courts and the authority have accorded these terms a broad interpretation that uh, encapsulates a wide range of subjects that is effectively synonymous with conditions of employment. No, either we want to interpret this statute uh, so as to give those who must uh, abide by it uh, some understanding of what they're supposed to do, or we send a message, don't rely on past precedent or even your reading of the statute, because somebody in the authority may disregard their own precedents and to simply decide to read the statute in an entirely different way. I still don't understand the difference between these two terms. Well, I think... I mean, it, 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 you know, you can, you, you can give this a cramped interpretation uh, the way we would do in my law school uh, classes where, where I taught as a tenured professor of, uh, of law at Georgetown. And this is the kind of hypothetical I would give them, then dare somebody in the class to tell me what is the difference and how you would defend that difference. I suppose that's what I'm doing here today, Ms. Kiko, because I, I need to know why in the face of precedent and the use of words, uh, which appear to be similar, uh, you have found it necessary to overturn existing precedent. I thank the gentlelady, and uh, Ms. Kiko, you may respond, and then I'm going to call on the distinguished ranking member, okay. Mr. Jordan. Thank you, Congressman. I appreciate the hearkening back to law school. I do recall many times answering types of questions like that. I appreciate it. Um, I believe that the way the wording of the, st of the statute says when it says conditions of employment mean any personnel policies and practices affecting working conditions. I don't believe that Congress would have used the same word in working conditions to mean conditions of employment unless they, I, I believe they didn't, they used two words for a reason. And so what I'm trying to do is to look at the precedent and find out how that precedent applies to the words of a statute. And frankly, I think it needs some clarification for the parties. Precedent in the FLRA has changed over the years in lots of different areas. Um, I'm looking at the precedent, but I don't change precedent unless I feel it's not true to the statute. And that's where I would look now to see how best to define the term working conditions in that context so that parties understand it. That's one of the main things that I'm trying to do in this as, as the chairman of the authority working with the other members is to make sure that our decisions are clear easy to read, understandable, so that anybody can understand them. Thank you.